How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Dead by Daylight in Post. My name is Anon, and today we have another juicy video coming from our man, Working Glass Hero, playing Huntress. But this is no ordinary Huntress. This is a baby Huntress. That's right, we have all Tier 1 perks. And on a map with Corn Vision. So this should be nothing but good times. Um, so right as we get out the gate, uh, the thing that I noticed the first time I watched this was the thing that I... Working Glass elects to check this generator in the corner and spends a little more time than necessary checking uh, the corners. The thing that I will say is that Huntress is very much like Trapper in the respect that Trapper needs every second in the game. Huntress also needs every second in the game. Every moment counts. So certainly here in the first couple moments of the game, I would suggest only going to check out the area around a gen if like this one you can hear the generator being worked on it ultimately turns out to not be a huge issue but it, it is uh something that you can do to to help yourself out early um so we find our steve immediately um unfortunately right out the gate we do get a generator uh to pop but that's that's just something that you run into as any killer, basically. We get a textbook treatment of the palette uh, for our man Steve here. Getting those cheeky palette throws in. And just like that, we have our first hook. Very quick, very clean, very nice. And we get a little bit of light breaker on top of it, too. Kind of wishing we had uh, Pop Goes the Weasel, but, you know, what can you do? Uh, so we're gonna go back and check the gen. There's not a whole lot going on, but we do have a cheeky Adam Trying to go for some for some altruism points uh, Now due to the fact that corn vision is absolutely the worst thing in creation we lose the chase, but my man working class decides to Get a bird's-eye view of the situation and does uh, Find himself face to face with some scratch marks leading to a very easy down on our Adam who happens to be our obsession this time around so now we have steve on uh on tier two and now adam is getting his first hook which is a very 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 good start of the game uh work is going to like to refill his hatches here if you have a moment if you have a, a locker nearby by all means you know you might as well um now what i should have done prior to recording this is I should have w looked to see what his add-ons are doing for him. I personally don't run any add-ons on uh, Huntress, so I really couldn't tell you what those uh, add-ons are doing for him right off the top of my head. But we do run into our Steve uh, immediately, again. Um, and we get uh, some auto-aim in here, but this interaction w was a little cool. I noticed that both... Steve and Working Class thought that that bit of hay bills would have a pallet in it, and it didn't, and it threw them both off. It was, it was a very funny little interaction uh, to watch. Now, our Steve is blind. Uh, blind or not paying any attention. He thought Work would just go straight for the pallet, and that would give Steve the, time, the moment he needed to just keep running. But Work flanked him, and it was beautiful. <laughs> so now our Steve once he's unhooked will be on death hook we're gonna mess up the the audio cue for this generator we're gonna have to go out back at it again but ultimately not a big deal uh, there's another generator pop uh, here is here something is going to happen that I really want to call some attention to so right now we have a Meg running over to the hook to go for an, to go for a save work lines up the shot gets the shot on our man over there now right here you'll notice that right here it bottlenecks now work is gonna find himself right in the middle of this as the Meg is trying to come this way all work has to do in this situation is keep his reticle keep his cursor directly in the center of this bottleneck because as the Meg is coming out she's gonna realize that she cannot go through work and she's gonna have to turn right back around and go out the way she came what he's gonna do instead is he's going to try to force the hatchet throw he's going to try to hit the meg as she's running around 
What you can do instead is if you keep your reticle directly center, you can wait for the Meg to come into your line of sight and then let go. Uh, but because he does this, he does end up missing his hatchet throw, but ultimately it doesn't really matter because you can just slap her. <laughs> Uh, that was the major thing that I really wanted to, to call some attention to. It's, it's not, a, like I said, not a big deal. You, it's a small, uh, no! bit of uh, utilization, uh, of, of the, the environment and, and a small thing that you can do to, uh, be more efficient. But we ended the chase very, very quickly, regardless. Um, Nurse's Calling coming in here. Very good perk to pick up on Huntress. Um, that was just good, I think. That was... We do get the D-Strike, which is fine. Now we have a choice between going after our Steve or going after our Meg. We're going after the Steve here because Working Class Hero knows that Steve is on Death Hook. And he just got D-Strike. So there's a little bit of salt. Not a lot. None, actually, whatsoever. <laughs> but now we're now we're back in the corn vision. And Steve is gonna run us around this jungle gym and around this pallet. Now Work ends up losing the chase here because he tries to go for the hatchet throw. But in his pursuit of the Steve, he runs in he runs into a Claudette who really should not have been fast vaulting at all uh here she's gonna mess up work very instinctively and very rightly delayed his throw of the axe the claudette was trying to time the pallet throw so that the hatchet would collide with the pallet on its way down which does happen it is a thing that you can do i wouldn't recommend doing it as a survivor because the likelihood of you timing it correctly is not very good but they went for it anyway. Work goes for a long throw here. You probably may not have been able to see it, but it does actually collide with the tree branch just above the generator. So the hatchet wouldn't have uh, hit anybody uh, on the generator, but it was a good try. It, it was good practice, and, and that's all I'm doing with my long throws also. Uh, so... You know, that's just that's just how it goes. You take a chance, and uh, you roll with it. So work has uh, one hatchet left, and two generators left. He's got one guy on death hook, which is this guy right here. Actually, trying to be sneaky, can't do it. He gets stuck on the tree, which is very very nice because that takes away from Steve's sprint burst uh, from getting hit, and that gives work and class of hero a chance to catch up. Now right here, right in the corral. Uh, if they're when they're running down the straight line, it's a prime time to pull up a hatchet and throw in the back of their head. The issue there was is that Steve already had enough time to go down that way and make the make the turn before Work had a chance to throw his hatchet. There, Working Class uh, baited out the D strike and gets a cheeky slap in the ass uh, through the window. Now, me personally, I would have tried to throw a hatchet in the back of his head as he went through the window, but I would have missed. I would, <laughs> in all manner of honesty, I would have hit the, the window frame and missed, and I'd still be chasing uh, Steve right now. So after that, we run into Meg right here. Perfect example of what I was just talking about. You can absolutely take that time where they have nowhere to go and throw a hash in the back of their head. Now, the Meg is on Death Hook. Uh, at the moment, which is why Working Class Hero is not going for the Claudette, because Claudette's only been hooked one time. And considering the area that the Meg ran into, there's not a whole lot of options for her. She's got a pallet over to her right, which she did not elect to go for, and the pallet in the shack. She didn't decide to go for any of the pallets because, and this is just some theory crafting here. Oh, she's not on Death Hook. I lied, she's on Tier 2. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it because she gives up gives up and dies right here? Yes, that's why I thought she was undead. Death hook. Okay. Um, my guess is that she was... I guess that eliminated my theory, because that doesn't make any sense. But the thought was that if she's going to die anyway, might as well not waste any pallets for your team. But 
I don't know what she was doing if she wasn't dead. So I have no idea. So now we're down to the Adam and the Claudette. Now the Adam has been hooked twice, and the Claudette has been hooked once. So if we can help it, we need to get a hold of the Adam, which that's exactly what we do because oh no, this is the Claudette. The white made me think it was the Adam. So we get a hold of the Claudette. This Claudette's making a lot of very questionable decisions. Uh, first with the fast vaulting. Nice corn vision shot. That was very nice. Mini celebration. Well, well deserved. But first she made the, the strange decision to fast vault and get herself caught when she didn't need to. And now she hides where it was pretty obvious that Working Glass Hero had had spotted her. Uh, nonetheless, now we're down to one last survivor, but we know he goes for cheeky saves, which is why Work tried to line up the shot. Unfortunately, uh, hits the hitbox of the dozer there. Unfortunate, but not a whole lot you can do about it at this point. Now we just chase. Adam, once again, being our uh, preferred uh, target here. I personally probably would have tried to throw a hatchet through the window, but there's no guarantee that Adam would have ran in a straight line, which turns out that's what he did, but there's really no way to know he'll do that. There's really no reason for a survivor to do that. So I probably would have lost a little bit of time and would not have had this sick juke in here. Now, the Claudette is making another questionable decision, hanging out where work and see him with nurses calling, and then makes another questionable decision by just hanging out. Now me personally, if my dude had just been downed right there and I'm not fully healed against a Huntress, I'm running the fuck away. Uh, so, so I'm not sure what the Claudette was thinking there, but regardless, she is down. We get a basement hook, which is awesome. Basement, The basement party is always a good time. And now it is time to find the Atom. Work very quickly finds our our man and uh now we are making our way to our hook very fast very clean game there's not a whole lot that i can really comment on uh the our, our man working class hero played this very very well very very cleanly um the only thing that i can really mention as we wrap up the game is there is a distinct difference in play style between me and work work is used to playing an m1 killer track so that's how he treated this game. He spent a lot of his time chasing and slapping and not throwing a lot of hatchets, which it's good because you're not wasting any any hatchet throws, right? And you're not wasting additional time reloading. Um, but this is also very good because Huntress typically struggles with two things, a light bringer and chaser. Here, he gets an iridescent chaser because he he's of the play style to play as an M1 killer. If I had been playing this game in the exact same match, I would not have gotten iridescent chaser here because I have a more mid-range play style. Um, I would have thrown more hatchets, I would have lost more chases, and I would have uh, scored lower in that respect. Um, as Working Class Hero uh, progresses, uh, through building this character and playing this character a bit, uh, I would like to make a few uh, small build suggest suggestions. I understand that he doesn't have uh, very many blood points at the moment. He's uh, not really leveled her a whole lot, which is why he's a baby Huntress right now with only Tier 1 perks. Um, so the combination of Agitation and Iron Grasp were a good idea, especially on Huntress having a slower movement speed. That helped him not lose any time in between downs and getting someone to the hook. Very, very secure uh, play style that way. Now, if he can at all help it, he probably shouldn't run both at the same time. They are a good combination, especially when you're just running tier one perks, but I would replace one of them based on his preference. And I, I assume he's gonna run agitation because he's a trapper man and why not, right? Um, if you were to replace one of the two, I would recommend replacing it with Whisperers. The reason for that being it uh, goes back all the way to the beginning of the match right here. When I first mentioned that when he goes over to check 
that generator in the corner of the map. He spends a, uh, more time than he should checking an area of the map where the survivors are just not, right? Whispers would have told him exactly where to start looking and exactly when to stop looking in that location and would have saved him a lot of time. Um, the when, when it comes to nurses calling, it's a very good choice. Um, the, the other perk suggestion that I would make if he's not wanting to, to stick to... Uh, sloppy butcher, which was a good in good combination with his nurse's calling by the way Pro That's probably what ended up getting him that, that Claudette kill. She probably thought oh, I'll be able to heal up to full by the time he gets here and then uh, I'll just run away a bit um, But if he were to replace the sloppy butcher, I would suggest especially when uh, while he's getting used to huntress I would recommend a noed uh, No one escapes death only because nur uh Huntress struggles with um, keeping pressure on the survivors and keeping them from doing gins. It is very common that you will get absolutely gin rushed and absolutely dunked on as a Huntress player and, there, and a lot of the time there's just not a whole lot you can do about it. Uh, Noed levels the playing field because as soon as that last generator pops you're back in the game and you're back in the game strong. So that, that would be that would be my suggestion. But with that, guys, thank you all for watching. Give this man some love, some support on his Twitch and his YouTube channel. Love this guy to death. He's a very good guy, does a lot of good shit. Let him know who sent you and all the love coming his way. And with all of that, thank you again for sending me this video work. I very thoroughly enjoy watching you play and commenting over it. And I also enjoy doing this in post series. So if you guys would like to see more, let me know. And as always, I love y'all. God bless. And I'll catch y'all next time. I'm out. Peace.